Hey sugar plums, welcome to this video. Thank you for joining me. I feel deeply privileged and honoured to be able to talk to you about this topic today. I'm going to basically lean into some of the thoughts, feelings and experiences surrounding my relationship with my matron goddess, Hell. So I want to start by saying a few things right off the bat that I think I need to make clear. First of all, at no point in this video am I going to talk about the way that I perceive my relationship with Hell or with deity in general. So I'm not going to talk about intellectually what I think is happening, or, you know, am I like a mystical pantheist? Am I soft polytheist, hard polytheist? I'm not going to go into all of that. I do have a playlist about deity where I talk about the way that I perceive the actual relationships that I have with beings of this nature. And also there's some stuff in that playlist that hopefully will help you if you're exploring your ideas about working with deity yourself. There's also another video in there from six years ago about my relationship with hell. And there's a video in there about my my um, situation working with hell and also with Mother Mary and how that fits. So you might just want to go to that web that website. No, go to that playlist and, and give it a little look. Uh, you might find what you're looking for there. So I'm not going to be intellectualising about the relationship with deity. I'm going to be talking about my personal experiences working with hell for almost 10 years now, if I can even believe that. But that is true. It's almost a decade that I've been a dedicant of this wonderful being. The next thing I want to say is that... Um, this is just largely unverified personal gnosis, okay? So I'm not telling you what you should feel about your own relationship with hell. I'm not telling you that if you begin working with hell, this is what it's going to look like. This is what you're going to experience. I don't know what you're going to experience. That is your journey. And I can only talk about mine. So there is a lot of unverified personal gnosis in here. And this is really about how it's been for me. And the other thing I want to say, just because I think it might come up in the comments section, I think possibly a Norse pagan of some description might come and uh, mention this. And it's fair enough um, that it would be mentioned. So let me clarify now out of the gate. Um, Hell was never explicitly described as a goddess in any of the literature that we have from the 13th century. And we don't really have any understanding for sure whether or not Norse people actually worshipped her, per se. Um, and even the 13th century um, stuff that we have is, you know, it's um, it's on some wobbly tectonic plates as it is, some of it. Um, that's a separate video on its own. So... Actually, technically, Hel is um, a Jotun, a giant. Um, she comes from the Jotnar class of people more. So, Yoki is, uh, Yoki? Loki is her father. Um, Loki is a demigod, and I don't mean that to be disparaging, but he is only half divine, right? Don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of love in my heart for the sly one, um, but he is only half divine. So he was born of a goddess mother and a Jotun father, giant for a father. And then on the other side, uh, Angraboda, Hel's mother, is a giant. So technically, Hell is only sort of like a quarter divine. And uh, so really you could say that she's a, she's a Jotun. She's from um, the, the sort of Jotnar cl class of beings, if you will. I don't see any issue with deifying her. I see many others deifying her. Certainly um, when I came across her and, and learned about her, she was described as a goddess. So popularly that's how she's been perceived for quite a long time now. Um, and so I don't see any issue with it at all. But yeah, technically, I guess you could say she's not a goddess of the underworld or a goddess of the dead, but she's very much a goddess behind this front door. Okay, so just putting that out there. Personally, the way I see it really is that we could quibble about things all day, but what's the point? I mean, Loki's dedicants don't quibble about him only being half divine. So why would I quibble about Hell's position as a divine being, you know? Um, and it's also true that Hell was seen as both a place and a person. And we're not really sure the extent to which either one was favoured necessarily in much the same way as Hades, right? Hades is a being, but also a, also a place. Okay, let me get into the meat and potatoes of what I'm here to tell you, what I'm here to say. First of all, I want to talk about how and why I work with hell. So how does it work? What are the nuts and bolts of it? What does it look like? And why? Why did I want to work with her in the first place? And is that still my why? Okay, so let me talk about um, how I started things with hell. And I'm not going to go into a massive amount of depth because there is a, another video where I talk all about my journey with hell. So I want to just explain that when I first started out, it was an experimentation. 
an experiment, experimentation. It was an experiment. Um, I did not really see myself per se as someone who worked with beings. I had never worked with beings in any kind of way before. I saw myself as um, a pantheist and I certainly worked with certain symbols of the divine or symbols of nature that I considered to be divine, but I had not had any relationships with beings. And um, I had had some interactions with non-human entities, but they certainly hadn't ended up in any kind of relationship. So the reason that I started working with Hell after researching and recognising that she was a being I could really connect with and I was really excited by um, was because I felt jealous. I felt jealous of witches who were working with, with deity and talking about it and talking about what they got from it and how it was helping them. And I couldn't help but feel this pang of envy. And after a while, I thought to myself, Kellyanne, just let yourself do it. You know, just just experiment, just find out if it would be something that would work for you or not. And if not, abandon ship, it's fine. But at least you've gone there instead of sitting on the sidelines, insisting that you're not that type of pagan. You're not that type of witch. You don't do that. For for what reason? Who's going to get hurt if you if you reach out to a deity and see if you can, you know, create that connection? So that's why I started. Um, what I wanted to receive when I started working with hell and what I suspected I might receive is I wanted to receive a set of important teachings and examples to follow. I thought that hell would be a good being to give me that. I wanted to receive a sense that I was being accompanied spiritually in a greater way than I had previously felt. So I wanted to feel like I was being shepherded, looked in on, worked with, accompanied on the path, basically. I think that's one of the main things I was jealous of when it came to other witches talking about deity, was just this feeling that they were in communion and in relationship as they explore, explored their challenges and stuff. And it made me feel bereft of something that I wanted also. I also wanted to have some cool experiences that made me more certain that working with gods is actually effective. So in other words, I wanted to have a result from my experiment. I wanted to have some experiences that I felt were obvious signs that, yeah, there is something in this deity thing for me. Obviously, I know there is for others because people talk about it and people talk about how enriching it is. But I wanted to know if there was something there for me. So obviously, I set up the hypothesis, I set up the experiment, and I very much wanted to see what would be the result of it. And I was hoping for some very cool experiences in that regard. And I received all three of these things uh, within the first two years of working with Hell. So I started by reaching out, um, looking at imagery of her, reading everything that I could about her and reading more widely about death goddesses, deities of the underworld, uh, how death is perceived in different cultures, how it was perceived in Norse culture um, back in the day. So really trying to understand the history, looking at um, Viking burial sites and stuff, which <laughs> anyone who <laughs> anyone who um, who's had a look into that, it's trippy as hell. I'll leave a lecture down below from Cornell University on that. And honestly, I really do recommend you watch it's well worth a watch so I learned about all that I learned about Viking funerals and I learned about these things more more widely right the more the sort of wide context around her um so it started like that um and you know as I said having imagery of her then I started speaking to her just asking her to come in if she wanted to and if she felt compelled to and I was doing meditations and I was um thinking about her before I went to sleep to make sure that if she had any opportunity to come through in a dream then she would do so so I was doing all of this and then at about the one and a half two year mark I really started to feel that I was in communion and things started to happen so I definitely got all three of those things I wanted the main ways that I have a connection with hell in an ongoing sense and um, I keep hell in my life if you will is I communicate with her using cards and also using runes to receive insight um, I do sort of path work with her image and path work with mentally the image of her and her realm. Um, I do astral travel to that realm. Um, I do devotionals to her on a reasonably regular basis. And I feel I'm very open to her energies and messages then. But even if nothing necessarily comes through then, I just love going through the beads for her. I write devotional poetry for her and commit it to the cauldron. Not all of it. Some of it I keep, but a lot of it I commit to the cauldron as an offering to her. Um, I do an annual Sabbath ritual on Samhain, which is very much dedicated to her. So there's an address to her, there's poetry, all of that stuff. So really venerating her then. 
Um, and I also do sort of visualizations, meditations, and I consider how Hell applies her lessons and energies to my life too. So I think about how to unlock the Hell within me and actually operate from that space of what I feel her archetype and energy and story represents to me. So I very much work with her as a medicine as well when I come across challenges in my life or when I'm thinking about how I want to approach something in my life hell is a reference point for me in that situation too. When it comes to receiving insights from her, asking for communion with her, asking for insight, yes I do throw runes, yes I do use cards, yes I do use um, visualizations and path working, but also um, hell will very much make her advice available to me without me requesting it too. So I do receive signs, I do receive sort of symbolic scenarios or key images that I know she uses to connect with me and she certainly does appear to me in dreams as well which is really special. Oh I can't believe I didn't say actually that when I was talking about writing poetry for her I do make art for her as well as you would have seen with the intro image. Um, I do like to create art that is you know is depicting her as well so there is a strong creative element. I don't commit the art to the cauldron though just the words and as I said not all of them but it does feel special to write something that is just for her only and you know, that's never going to be read to anyone. I'm not necessarily going to remember it, but I know that it was like really gorgeous in the moment. That feels like an offering to me. It feels like something that is slightly sacrificial on my part because I'm very precious about good poetry that I write. Um, so I'm, qu I'm quite precious about some of the mediocre poetry I write, I think. So it's difficult to commit it to the cauldron, but I do it for her. I do it for love. I personally think there are certain deities that have a distinctly agreed upon strong vibe and a strong set of energies and there are other deities where it's less so and it's a little bit more malleable in terms of the collective response and what people tend to say who work with those deities. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm just overtly focusing on my goddess because she's my goddess. I noticed that there are certain collective perceptions of key deities that are very distinct, like they're very, very agreed upon. And some deities, it's more malleable. So you'll find that the followers of certain deities have really very differing opinions. I noticed that dedicants of hell have very similar opinions on her. So when it comes to her vibe, her energy, people do tend to say that she's very tough, she's very stern, she's very tough love, she tells it how it is, she makes you get up and fight, she forces you to take responsibility. There's all of that kind of a vibe with Hell. And I can understand that because of the role that she plays and the kingdom that she lives in. Um, she's the ruler of all of the, the dead that didn't die in battle. She's in a very icy realm. She's got half a face. <laughs> So she's walking around in this dark, icy realm, looking after the dead, doing a very tough job and doing it alone as well. And she was cast down into that realm, let's not forget, you know, she didn't choose it necessarily. She was given the responsibility by Odin, who was a little concerned about her as a child of Loki, and, you know, gave her something to do. So I can understand why people feel like the, why people experience her as being um, harsh and very stern and very kind of like, this is how it is type of thing. Um, I personally find that I do find her communication style very straightforward and very distinctive. So when she gives me a message, I understand that it's a message from her. You know, it's very, there's something that, that really does qualify it as a hell message. And it's quite unmistakable, I must say. Um, I, I definitely think she can be tough loving for sure. I definitely think she's blunt and she gives she gives me what I need um, without prettying it up. You know, she gives me the medicine with no sugar. Um, she gives me the the medicine distilled, not diluted, not with any kind of mixer, but just like a straight shot. So that's definitely true. That's often the case um, for sure. I don't see her as a punishing force in my life. Um, I don't see her as domineering. I don't see her as necessarily expectant of things from me per se. And I certainly don't experience her as possessive personally. So I do work with other beings. I don't think that's, I don't feel like that's ever an issue. I think she promotes independence within me and she promotes um, strength within me. And uh, I think that that includes the right to ignore the messages that she's giving, you know. So if uh, if a being, a deity that you work with really does promote independence, strength, free thought, sovereignty, all of that stuff, then of course that deity must also to an extent respect when you don't want to listen to them or when you're not consulting them on things or when you are not behaving in a way 
that is of the influence of the deity. So, for example, if I'm behaving in a way that is not very hell like, for instance, if I'm being clingy, needy, fearful of being on my own, um, you know, really just approaching something in a kind of weak way on the back foot, feeling like I can't do it, feeling like I'm not capable. Um, you know, obviously that's not very much in the image of hell. So I'm not accessing my hell energy within me at that point. I'm not utilizing her as the mirror of the hell archetype within me, but I am practicing my free will. I'm exercising my right to choose the situation that I'm in. So I don't feel like she has any punishing energy for me when I'm doing that. It doesn't Really work that way in my case. I never get the sense that Hell is disappointed with me or she's turned her back on me because I'm, you know, I'm not being very Hell like in my execution of a situation. Obviously, I work with Hell. One of the main reasons I work with Hell is so I can remember to be Hell like in my execution of things. I want to approach things in the manner that she does. I take her presence in my life as one would take the presence of a great mentor in their life. Um, but if I'm not behaving that way, if I've lost my footing, um, if I'm, you know, kind of like acting out of pocket or not being the best version of myself, I don't feel that she has a punishing or, or you know, disapproving energy. I feel like the, the energy that I get from hell, the vibe that I get from her is if I'm going to walk onto a battlefield of silliness and pain that I could really save myself from, but I'm like, I'm going out there. I kind of feel that her energy in my life is to say, if you're going out there, you might want this and just, you know, she's pointing to armor and a really good sharp sword. Um, that's kind of more the feeling I get is just, you know, you got to do what you got to do, but you might want these things. I don't necessarily see her as a mother in a really sort of overt way. I do refer to her sometimes as the Dark Mother, but that's more to do with the fact that I work with the Holy Mother. So I work with the Virgin Mary. So to me, when I have them in a kind of symmetry with each other, and I'm referring to the archetypal force of both of them, I may refer to them as the Holy Mother and the Dark Mother because it just balances. And I like that symmetry. And I like that feeling that I have these two cosmic mothers, these two forces coming together, and they operate in different ways to feed me and teach me. So that's why I sometimes refer in some of my prayers, for example, to hell as the dark mother. But actually, she doesn't that often come across as a motherly energy in my life. She does sometimes. She definitely does sometimes, but not always. Um, I'm not afraid to sit at my altar for hell and cry and go through the beads and, and talk to her and all of that stuff. I'm not afraid to be honest with her. I'm not afraid to say, to, to say how I'm feeling, to admit that I'm faltering, to admit that I'm lost and I need help at all. Um, it's not like I can't be that way with her, but most of the time I see her more as a a mentor. She is an essence that outclasses my own essence. She is a wisdom that outclasses my own wisdom in numerous ways. And so it's almost like I'm her apprentice and she's willing to show me. She's willing to take me around the kingdom, show me, you know, her wisdom and let me drink of her knowledge. And I'm just kind of like wide eyed and bushy tailed and very attentively listening and paying attention because I want to I want to lean into my power as that class of essence and have access to the potential uh, of the hell within me. I see hell as a mirror of the hell within me that can be hard to access and that I sometimes need to remind myself is there. So I see it much more that way. Um, she's a mentor to me and she's already taught me so much that's helped me level up in life. And it's almost like I'm attentively learning. She's like an expert, basically. She's an expert and I, you know, I'm listening to her and taking notes because why wouldn't I be, basically? She definitely doesn't mollycoddle. She doesn't make excuses for me when I'm being obstinate or not paying paying attention or whatever, but I don't feel like she disapproves of me or anything of that nature. It's just that when I'm attentive to her, she'll be attentive to me. And hopefully I'm not being confusing here. Hopefully some of you will know what I mean or get what I'm trying to say. However, interestingly, although I don't feel that I don't feel a disapproving vibe when I'm not operating from the hell energy per se, I do feel a congratulations, I approve of you vibe when I am operating from the hell essence, which to me is I'm operating independently. I'm being firm but fair. I'm holding great boundaries. I'm being strong in the face of challenges. I'm really leaning into that force that I have inside of me that's helping me to deal with something I want to turn away from. That is all 
part of hell's domain hell teaches me that and encourages me with that tenfold and when i'm operating from that space i do feel like she's smiling on me for me hell's vibe is definitely warrior s so there's definitely a fighter there um there's definitely a compassion but it's not in a naive way it's in a firm way that also acknowledges that she has needs and she has a job she's doing and she doesn't take shit so that comes across in how she is with me and how and what i learn from her and the other thing that i wanted to say about hell was that she comes across to me as exceptionally wise and somebody that i would go to for counsel especially when i'm indecisive or when i've gone into a really dark difficult place and i need help however she is not consistent with her communication she has definitely pulled away and been way more distant at certain times than at others but sort of luckily for me as I was going into this relationship with her many moons ago, many moons ago now, I never expected consistent communication. And I actually think I might have had a good instinct for how it would be between me and her because um, I kind of felt that if I was, if I wanted a goddess that was going to be consistently present and that I felt was consistently close and in touch, I wouldn't go for hell. It, it just didn't really seem to fit what I felt would be the connection that I would have and what would be possible. And I was quite right in terms of my perception. Um, sometimes with, with absolutely no action on my part to cause this, she's been just a lot more distant and has kind of phased herself out a bit and then always comes back in quite strongly. So I would say that as well. And, and I've never personally thought of that as wrong or worrying I never, I didn't really, I didn't really want that anyway. It wasn't something that I was really worried about, like, oh, what if I connect with a deity and I don't feel that they have my back in every situation or I don't feel that they're close with me whenever I do a devotional or, you know, that was, wasn't a worry for me. That wasn't something I necessarily needed. I feel like Hell definitely does have some specialities when it comes to what she's teaching me and certain situations where I would expect that she would be present. So I'll read them to you now. Tough love is the first thing I put on the list. Definitely, as I mentioned at the beginning, tough loving, straightforward, says it how it is, alerts you to the thing you don't want to see, you know, um, very kind of real. So there's definitely that. Uh, definitely hell's presence in my life my life helps me boil situations down to the simplest way of viewing them so if you're well I won't speak of you because I don't know what's going on with you in hell but for me if I'm overthinking if I'm glossing things over because I don't want to see the truth if I'm creating narratives to make me feel better but they don't really have much to do with reality that'll be a key time for hell to make herself known and start talking me down from that fantasy ledge and grounding me into reality. So that's definitely a speciality. Um, settling indecisions for me. I've noticed in my whole relationship with Hell, nearly 10 years, one time that she becomes very apparent to me and available to me is when I'm trying to make a decision and I feel so stuck and I'm looking at all of the the material, the pros and cons, the the things that would help me make the decision, but I feel stuck. Uh, often she comes along and is very helpful to me then. Uh, warning me to be ready to fight, to protect myself, or letting me know that something is coming, that's very hell. When it comes to my relationship with hell, that is very much um, a characteristic of our connection. She prepares me, she starts mentally preparing me for something that's going to be difficult. She reminds me of my strength, definitely. When I think of her, her story, her image, everything... I really like lean into my own fortitude and she also urges me towards independence and self-respect so that is uh, something that is definitely her vibe. So the imagery that I connect with Hell, first of all obviously the rune Hagalaz, Hell's rune, very important and I will be getting it tattooed on me at some point so that's there. I associate the half moon with Hell, I associate dogs and wolves with Hell Anything from the Corvid bird family, but especially ravens and crows, particularly. Some of my most early symbols and signs that I received from her came in the form of ravens, uh, either depicted ravens or real physical ravens. Uh, swords, I connect with Hell. She very much uses them to get in touch with me. She uses the Ace of Swords in tarot and she uses sword imagery all around me, particularly a single long sword. Obviously death, any imagery to do with death, but especially artistic depictions of death and the maiden, death and the lady, you know, and that whole um, that whole tradition in art is very hell-like to me. Uh, women holding skulls in art, anything, humans engaging with death in any way, and that sort of boundary between the two. 
certain weather is reminiscent of hell so barren trees icy roads snow hail uh, all of those things are representative of her to me and also any black crystals so obsidian jet uh, black tourmaline and also uh, all the runes so the whole runic alphabet is symbolic of hell some of these things are things that i created the association with and she tapped into and used and some of them are more things that you know she gave me the sense oh apples as well i can't believe i forgot apples um yeah apples to represent the orchard uh in her realm so apples as well but yeah as i was saying some things are representative of her from my point of view and some from her point of view or her um sort of myth and they they've sort of come together in a way so that i know when symbols are being given to me in in this context in my relationship with her uh the knife and the plate as well uh, sometimes is representative of her too to me as i think a lot of people will explain when it comes to working with deity sometimes i request an image i request a sign i request the knowledge of her presence and the symbol comes to me, the event comes to me, and sometimes quite out of the blue, I'm not necessarily asking for anything or even considering her and something will, will come to me. And it will always be pretty much at the time that I needed it. And I'll be like, whoa, okay. So it's very much a two-way street at this point. Um, I feel like some, you know, a lot of the time it's uh, something I need in that moment, but I'm not consciously looking for it. I'm not considering her or meditating on her. And it just comes to me because it's that right moment it's required. One of the most beautiful things that Hell has taught me is to let the dead things go. She's really good with that for me on my journey. Um, accepting that something has changed, accepting that something wasn't what I thought it was, accepting when it's time to stop trying, when it's time to reroute my energy elsewhere. Uh, those kinds of things where I would hang on and hang on and I would not accept it and I would dwell over it. She's very good at kind of like slapping my hand and saying, it's rotten, let it go. Or it's gangrenous, cut it off. I know that sounds really gross, but sometimes she does, sometimes she does advise me in those very strong, scary terms when it's something that means so much to me and I'm holding fast to it and I don't want to believe what it is that I'm really feeling and what it is that I deep down know about the situation which is that it's not good for me or it's masquerading as something that it's not she's very good at reminding me that everything I need is within myself the selfhood that I have is is what should allow me to let go of things that are rotting and just accept that um and I do meditate sometimes on the myth of boulder uh, I will leave a, a link down below that explains that myth. A lot of people see that as evidence that hell is cruel. Hell is cruel. She's unfeeling. Um, she's uncompromising. She's rigid in her point of view and she doesn't have empathy for other, uh, you know, the feelings of others. I see that myth in such a different way and I've seen it in a different way ever since I first read it. Basically what happens is Boulder, who's the most favoured of the gods really, he's a great god, everybody loves him. He dies because of a trick that was played on him and people want him back, you know. Um, they ask hell please give boulder back that was a that was a like you know a horrible little mistake and we love him and hell said if you can get everything in all the worlds to cry for him i'll give him back and there was this one giant probably loki in disguise who uh wouldn't cry for him so hell said sorry i'm keeping hold of your favorite god there we go you don't need a link i've explained it um so a lot of people see that as evidence that she's unfeeling and she's tough but i see it as evidence that she's real you know, that sometimes things are not fucking fair. And actually that is a part of reality. And, you know, it's just, uh, I see that as her being a boundary holder, somebody who is doing a job and will not necessarily make exceptions left and right just because of people's emotions. And that's been really important for me is to know that it's okay to hold my boundaries. It's okay not to compromise always and sacrifice always to make sure others are feeling good. Actually, sometimes other people's feelings are their responsibility and I need to be able to hold my sacred boundaries. So she's helped me in that way. And also the myth of Boulder is a story that helps us to understand that we have to let the dead things go and know it's not fair. No, some people are cut down in their prime. Like, yes, that happens. You know, sometimes terrible things happen 
thousands of deaths, mil- thousands of deaths, millions. Um, and yes, we should grieve. And yes, it's sad. And yes, it's disturbing. But at the same time, evidently, there are these shadows in reality. Evidently, um, death is something we have to face. Shadow is something we must confront. Um, decay is inherent in all component things. So, you know, she really, she really reminds me of that when I'm being stubborn and petulant and hanging on and refusing to see the truth of something or refusing to say goodbye to something and go on to the next phase. She is just one of the most potent energies for me of letting go, accepting, moving on, seeing what else is there. She pulls me out of that five of cups mood that I get into for those who are tarot literate. Another thing that hell has really taught me and helped me with is hell is double fucking hard. Hell is double fucking hard hard, all right? Like, she's intimidatingly hard. She lives in an icy, dark, cold as fuck realm. She does this job of shepherding the dead completely on her own, no husband, no children. She was kind of um, cast out, but she owned it. She made the best of her circumstances. Uh, She is um, also a warrioress in a way. We know from the poetic Edda that she was always destined to come up from her realm at the time of Ragnarok, which is like the Nordic apocalypse and take her army of the dead on a big boat into Ragnarok. And that's why I think she gives me that warrior-esque vibe and why she communicates with me in the form of long swords, uh, which was something I originally realised from how often she would present to me the Ace of Swords when I used to communicate with her more through tarot. I now do it pr- predominantly through runes. Um, but then I started to realise, like, she gives me long sword stuff quite a bit. And that I found that interesting because at first I thought, oh, that's that's not really something that is associated with her. But yet I feel it is strongly. And then I thought to myself, well, if she's literally taking an army of the dead into Ragnarok, she's going to be wielding something. And that must be it. That must be the association. So not only is she a fighter in her everyday life, not only does she show great fortitude, um, but she also, we know, is battle ready. She is coming up for Ragnarok. She's not staying there. She's getting involved and she's bringing an army with her. So she reminds me whenever I'm feeling weak, incapable, on the back foot, scared, she gives me courage. She tells me to stand when I need to. She 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 reinforces those parts of me when I'm finding it hard to connect with them. I've actually always loved being inspired by people who are hard as fuck, you know? People that just jump into the sea in the winter. People who, well, obviously not from nothing because you're going to end up getting um, hypothermia. But like, you know, people who are who are winter swimmers, people who swim in icy water, people who um, do amazing things like, I don't know, swim across the channel or do these big challenges, walk up mountains and stuff like that. Hell was very useful in helping me to extend that, to think more about the people who live their everyday life on the different sort of intersections of marginalised identities, to think about people who every single day have to live in a world that is not set up for them. Um, She actually helped me to really honour the time that I spent when my back injury was really bad and I couldn't walk and I found it very difficult to move sometimes and I couldn't work. She helped me reframe that part of my life and now when I have my back injury pain flaring up now, it still happens. Um, She really helps me to reframe that. I see myself as a warrior in the face of that. Uh, So that was a, a really interesting energy that she brought to me, that warrior energy. And I'm very connected to that now. And I feel I can access it faster because of my connection with her. Hell was a massive part of the reason that I started my own business full time. And I left my office job and I came into what I do now as a full time spiritual counsellor and tarot reader big big part of it she was the she was the one that gave me the message that it was time and that i needed to honor what my calling was and that it was the moment to actually make the leap so i i can only thank her for that that's her uh, influence and i would also say that she not only reminds me to keep doing my shadow work because you know, she's kind of, um, she's a representation, I think, of what's conscious and accepted, the fleshly part of her, and what's unconscious and feared, the the skull, the skeleton part of her. So she reminds me to keep confronting that and also to do my work to help others confront that. And, you know, she, she really is half rotting, you know, and she really is in this realm of the dead. So uh, she looks after everybody who didn't die in battle. So everyone that doesn't go to Valhalla, 
comes into her cold clutches and so she definitely is a shadow work goddess without any shadow of a doubt and oh there we go a shadow work goddess without any shadow of a doubt and when I'm feeling like there's something I don't want to confront in shadow she will take me there on the bullet train you know so that's uh really interesting and whenever I feel like I'm repelled by something or something is scary or something is ugly she asks me to lean into that explore that what is going on there and that's interesting. For me personally, hell also reinforces my decisions in a world where they are not always validated. So hell is unmarried, she is child free, um, she's running her own thing, she's got her own situation, her own realm that she looks after. And, um, you know, she in, in many ways that is representative of my decisions. I also live alone and I'm child free and I'm running my own business. So there is that sense that when I'm feeling wobbly, in my identity and when I'm feeling that I don't measure up to what would be perceived as success for somebody like me by this age, she's definitely this image that I come to and I say, yeah, this is okay. What I'm doing is powerful and strong. This is how I'm meant to be and this is acceptable. If it's, if it's good enough for hell, it's good enough for me. As I mentioned earlier with the boulder myth, hell definitely has helped me to hold stronger boundaries and have better best practices. And it's always a work in progress, both professionally and personally. But I feel like she's definitely come in with the goods where that is concerned. She's reminded me that it's okay to not do what everybody in all of the nine worlds wants me to do you know and that boulder myth is really spoke to me on that deep level too that she was not just going to be she wasn't just going to succumb to what the popular what, what the mob wanted what the, what the masses wanted she is here to do what she needs to do and sometimes she needs to hold firm and it's the same with me in that myth she gives herself the opportunity to give somebody a chance to level with her and to come to the table with something before they can get what they want that's quite different to just rolling over and saying oh yeah take boulder back it's fine it's no problem she is working i think with that higher code of death as a lesson as a message and as the great equalizer as the the leveler um, there is no sense that you can just not die because you're popular or you're great or you're worthy or you're an amazing warrior or you're an amazing artist we all must face our time um, and and that in a way although it's a very difficult thing to meditate on has been very helpful for me in my work with her to me hell is a being that shows her scars her imperfections her her beingness is only half what we would consider conventionally beautiful. And it's half what most people want to turn away from, what they fear, what they don't want to think about. And that's helped me a lot with authenticity. And when I first started working with Hell, I had been um, sort of giving myself the opportunity to ponder whether or not I might want to be more open about my scar tissue on my arms from self-harm. And I, after working with her, really leaned into doing so. I really was like, you know what, um, this is this is me. I used to do this to myself. I'm not gonna walk around in a long sleeve top just to make sure everybody else is comfortable. This is who I am. This is, this is a part of my story. And if anybody would judge me for it, that's a bullshit filter for me. That's a sign for me that I wouldn't wanna get closer to that person. So I think Hell really helped me with that too. I think there's a great big authenticity piece with Hell. She is who the fuck she is, you know? So that has helped me as well. And of course, sort of staying on the subject of authenticity, I think hell has been a major player when it comes to inspiring me to share my story online. So talk about my mental health, talk about my disordered eating, talk about self-harm, the things I go through, you know, um, certain aspects of my past. She's definitely helped with that too. It can be difficult to work with hell, I'm not gonna lie. During the time of the pandemic happening, so much death, um, of course, literal death, uh, and also the the death of dreams, the death of businesses, the death of um, of uh, mental stability for many people. So lots of different kinds of death tied up in this time. It has uh, been sort of, I guess you could say, ambiguous for me. The the fact that, for example, I look at imagery of death always when I go to my altar for hell and I do my devotionals and I speak with her and I look upon her image and everything. And I think about what the rune Hagalaz actually means, um, that it's about devastation, chaos, things just things just blowing up in your face and having to deal with it and everything crumbling and the, the, the terror of that um, and how that connects with her and what she represents and what she's asking us to accept. So there's definitely been uh, 
sort of some deep meditations that I've gone on in that way. And it hasn't always been easy for me. I think it's very interesting when we work with a deity that represents death, the underworld, anything like that. Certainly our relationship with those beings just in and of itself can be filled with shadow that we need to unlock and unpack. But it's been worthwhile doing that to continue on the journey with her. And that's all I'll say about it for now. I hope that these insights have been useful. I hope that you have benefited from me rambling about my own gnosis on this topic. If you are a follower of hell, dedicant child, daughter, whatever you want to call it, of hell, um, a child of hell, please do uh, write down below and let me know what did you resonate with from this and what would you say is different to your experience uh, maybe you feel hell has been sort of around on the perimeter of your spiritual journey and perhaps this video has helped you to um, sort of get a little bit more confident with connecting potentially uh, let me know down below any of your thoughts and feelings as always um, come and join my patreon if you want access to other things from me um, you can join my newsletter for occasional messages unboxings and that kind of stuff please join me on my social media platforms darlings and like and subscribe if you haven't and you feel called to okay much love and blessed be Thank mm -hmm.